Okay, so welcome back to this video. So, um, before we actually start this video, um, as you can see, I did some update to my um, tutorial webpage. Uh, and I'm gonna, uh, yeah, as you can see, there are some notes, uh, some notes and some summaries. And yeah, and I'm gonna leave the link to this project in the description below if you want to check it out. And please subscribe if you want more shortcut way, which is click on the information icon and uh, click it, and so you can access it more quicker. If you want to do that, please subscribe to my channel and thank you very much. Um, all right, so. Let's before I actually jump into the CSS, let's do a quick recap on what we learned. So well, we learned the basic layout, tags, and forms. That's pretty much it. And we have some code right here. So what I teach you is not necessarily all the tags. There are even more tags that you can find. So make sure you go to a HTML documentation page. For more information, and there are some actual great exercise page that I recommend you to check it out. There are great exercise page such as um, freecodecamp.org, and I'm gonna leave on on, the, on this video. So go to free freecodecamp.org and conacademy.org. They all have great um, HTML practice and CSS and even JavaScript. Okay, so now it's time to in jump into our main topic for today. Introduction to CSS. So first question I ask is what is CSS? This is actually a good question and I'm gonna answer it. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheet. From the name, we obviously know it helps make our web page more stylish. Okay? So, as you can see in, the, in my web page for now, they're blank. Like the background color is white, all the texts are like black except the link and everything's boring, right? Well, CSS can even make it, make it first it's gonna beautify uh, your whole web page. Second, it can make a little bit interactive, all right? So let's jump right in. First is where do we type or write our CSS code? There's three ways to do that. Uh, actually, technically two ways, but I'm just gonna say three ways. So first, we're going to see the head here. We're going to create a new tag called style. And then you can type your CSS code straight here. I'm gonna explain this code later. And you can see how the paragraph changed to red. This is one way to do that. Uh, second way to do this is create a style sheet, an uh, external CSS file that link it to HTML file. So suppose I have a uh, so suppose. I have a, a CSS file called my called um, my style does CSS. So how suppose I link that? Well, here's how you're supposed to link this. I'm gonna paste in here. Then I'm gonna put into a head tag, and let me let us analyze it a little bit first. So link rel, which is stand for relation, I guess, equal to style sheet, and type equal to uh, text slash CSS. So this part tell the browser, hey, please use the style sheet, and it's it's uh, stored as a CSS file. And what its actual link is traf, it traf is 
equal to my style.css. Well, my style.css is a fake file, obviously, so the browser won't show anything. But here's how to link your uh, external CSS file. And the third way, which is you are going to use online script. For example, you will see that this makes this much comfortable, right? This makes this web page like more clearly. They have larger headers and the text, the fonts, font sizes are somewhat larger, and they change some colors around. This is called boots, bootstrapped, and we will dig more deeper on them to. Uh, on next video So don't be worried if you don't know bootstrap yet All right So that's the three way you can link a, a CSF file into your HTML file now we're uh, Going to learn actual code. So since we're using codepen.io They have a three individual individual tab HTML CSS, and JavaScript. So I'm just going to click CSS I don't have to do anything at all. I don't have to link it since, well, default, they are right linked together. All right, so let's start with this. I don't like the background color. I don't want uh, of the whole my web page. So what do I want to do is I want to change the web page. As you can see, they are white right now. I want to change it to, let's see. See, let's say a little bit yellow. So, what I'm gonna select is since I want to change all the uh, actual web page content, I'm gonna create, I'm gonna select body. So, this is called CSS selector, which is select the tags that you are using, then curly braces, and then what you're going to type is background dash color equal to yellow. Good. Now this is yellow, but I don't really want this yellow. I want some yellow that says between um, red and yellow. Well, you say orange. Okay, but I want some, let's say, light yellow. Hey, they're gone. Why? All my background color are gone now. Why? What happened? Well. As you can see, the if you use uh, anything that's related to color, there's some default character, some default words that's built into uh, CSS files such as yellow. So the browser can now render it as a uh, as a, as yellow. But if you want to make a specific color, what? Well, and so you can see each uh, each one of us has this um, individual description on what color we are using. So the CSS creator cannot just like create okay light yellow, but what if this is red yellow something like that? So that what RGB comes in. RGB stands for red, green, and blue. If you study R two, we know there are three basic colors in our nature. We can use red, green, and blue to create. Literally any color else in existing in our world, but no color can create red, green, blue. So let me Google something first. Uh, I'm going to Google RGB. RGB color picker. So as you can see, this is called RGB color picker. So now I can pick the color that I exactly want it to be. So don't worry about all of these right now. Don't worry about hacks, CMYK, HSV, and HSL. Right now we'll talk about them later. What we really care is RGB. So let's make it. I'll make it somewhere here. Yeah. So to be exact. So I'm gonna paste that right in. And you can see it changed to the orange that I want. Great. So this is one way of styling this using background color. 
Now, I remember when we implement the bootstrap CSS file in, I want to make the header larger. So, I'm going to select H2, but H2. So, I want to change the font size, so I'm just going to use font dash size. Let's see, I want to make it 30. Here is a question. Why nothing changed? Well, I can save it and rerun it. Nothing changed. Why? Well, remember in my uh, middle school science teacher, he often told us a no naked number. You know what I mean. So what no naked number means? Hey, don't give me naked number, which is mean don't give me any number without unit. So here is a question. This number is actually without unit, trusted or not. Yes, I only have 30. So what I need to do is I'm going to, I'm going to tell you the first unit we are going to, need to use. That is called pixel. After we type px in, you can see it's significantly be lar make larger. So 13, this is regular, this is 30, regular, 30, regular. All right, I'm not going to mess with this. Okay, so what if I also want to change H1? Well, it turns out there's an easier way to uh, easier way to do that rather than create. A, yeah, absolutely, you can create a separate selector and separate code. Literally, just the same thing, but. What we will do if, but in programming, you need to know we want to correctness and efficiency and style. So this does not fit efficiency since we are repeating literally two things, right? We are repeating font size to the thirty pixel. So what we will do, there's an easy way to do that. Is I'm just gonna put H1 right here. Okay. And let's see what will happen if I delete this line. Yeah, everything is good. So it turns out you can add multiple CSS selectors. All right. And by the way, after we talk about font size, I don't like the font they're using, really. Like they're using times. Nobody likes times in your Roman, you know. So. We are going to create a font dash family tag. What this did is this can make can change our font. So do you want to change to? I'm gonna say. So um, before we start on font family, there are already some fonts already built in into our CSS and the browser. So I'm going to show a few, it's called sans serif. Okay, nothing changed, maybe this is having sans serif. Serif. Okay, um, there's more interesting one called fantasy. Why this isn't working? Do I have to add a comma? Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I had to, you had to add comma between them. That's a bug. I'm so sorry. I didn't pay attention to that. As you can see, now it's changed to fantasy, and let's change it to sans serif. And let's change to Arial. They are most commonly used, and times, which is short for times in Roman. Okay, so I guess fantasy would be cool on this one. And I will also want to create a font family. For my paragraph, but I don't really think that any of them would be match. About my opinion, on um, so this so the CSS that's the fonts that built into CSS are not a lot. Okay, are not a lot. They're just basically like five or six something. So it turns out Google provides some uh, good things. As you can see, if we go to font, 
DuckGoogle.com. Oh wait, you can go here now. And you can see there's more font that you can use it. More fonts. So I'm gonna select which one's my favorite. Um, I'm gonna say Haptas Lab. I don't know what these are. What this is. So if you find a font that's uh, is your favorite, for okay, Oxygen may be better. So you can click it for more details. Where you can click add button and you can say one family selected and then click on this black bar and then click on this preview or share button and you can see oxygen now so and now you're going to type this so let's to copy this link and then put into our head tag our header tag Great, but nothing happens since we didn't specif specify yet. Specify, so we will add the font family to here, and let's wait for magic to happen. Okay, so nothing seems happening. Let me see. Is there something wrong with it? Ooh, here we go. Now it's working. Oh uh, yeah, I should scroll down. I, I, uh, yeah, it's a list. So, so I'm gonna come uh, and also all the list item. I would like that also. So you see that I got two font family here. What's that? So it turns out some old browser cannot really understand what Google is doing here. What this link, <laughs> what this tag is doing here. So. Well, instead, if they cannot display oxygen font size, a font family, and I don't want them to display times in Roman, usually we'll use sans dash serif, sans serif font. All right, cool. Good. Now it's to this last thing we will learn. Did you know how? Um, not this year. We will learn them later. I want to change the color for this this code, so it make more um, significant that they are cold. So what we'll do is we're going to do code. Code is actually a tag, as you can see. I use um somewhere right here. There are code. They're just gonna display like a monospace, which is another font family font. Not built into CSS and browsers, so just so you know. So code, I'm gonna color, and let me see a good color for that. I'm gonna say somewhere here, and let's copy the RGB value. So let's see RGB this. Okay, so it turns out it's a little bit way too light. A little bit deeper. Let's try this. So let's try 230. Mm, it's still too light. Maybe it's my background. So I'm going to delete the background for now. Okay, so it's look better. So it's make more significant that they are uh, they are cold. All right, and that pretty much is everything I want to talk you talk to you about introduction to CSS. So we talk about font size, font family, color, and background color. All right. So in next tutorial. As I promise you, we will do uh, on boots, bootstrap. So thank you for watching.